everyone, welcome to After Hours here on Patreon. Uh, fans of the Beer Fridge Podcast, our followers of the Beer Fridge Podcast, I should say. Uh, welcome to you guys. Obviously, this is visual, so hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Callum's fucked up. <laughs> uh, makeup on for this one, as you can tell. We've just uh, finished recording that podcast with Trinity, um, Bruco, based in Litchfield, brand new brewery, seven month, seven month old. Um, first question: um, If you had tasted these beers, not knowing anything about the brewery, would you think the the brewery was seven month old? No chance. Nah. No. no, not at all. Sorry, look at this. They're far better. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I, I hope that's. I hope that beer's different class. Sorry, Gavin, but I know what no, you're right. talking about. Trinity, um, I hope that beer that you've poured there in that different class, it better be. The one oh. here, <laughs> it will be. It will be. <laughs> no, the tr- that and then you one. paid me for it. <laughs> I know. Aye. I did pay you for it. I think. Yeah, I, I, I'm, due, I'm actually due you now. I'm due you for brick. You should honestly, the pay, like you should just like. Honestly, I have a tab. We should just. We, right, we, we should just run a. But I mean, who would look after the balance sheet? Nah, uh, no me. What? I've got I've got enough today. Scott Scott Colin Scott Walker. Yeah. Colin Scott Walker, we will pay you absolutely Scott nothing. Walker. We we have a job for you. Uh, we'll we'll run we'll 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 let you run. We'll allow you to run the spreadsheet. To fair, he won't actually hear this because he's not subscribed to the Patreon page. Scott He'll enjoy that. So what are you shouting at him for now? I don't know. You started it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I had Trinity Trinity Brew quote on this evening. We've sampled uh, four of their beers this evening, all lovely, fantastic beers, genuinely good beers. Um, that we think all very good beers. Well, we'll enjoy the standard is high for a, a, a brewery that's seven months old. Uh, we've got a head brewer there from previously from Attic. Um, out of the four, so we had the Nipa, uh, the Black IPA, West Coast, and a kiss from the rose. Go around the table. Uh, Marky Boy, your favourite? The Black IPA, hands down. It was head and shoulders above the other brews for me. Um, the the smell of it, like the guys kind of mentioned it before. I got a chance to kind of pour it and they were talking about the aroma that it created and all the rest of it. So when I opened the can, I just... We got the old beak in and had a couple of good whiffs. And honestly, it was so tropical. It was it had a like a, a lovely piney flavor, like note to it. Uh, you got a wee bit of like kind of roasted, like you know, is it like a? There's a bit of roast in this day, wasn't there? But like on the nose, like you would expect from like a. I want to just say like a a good hearty IPA. Yeah. I mean, you poured it and you were like, it was like a dark. You know, like a stout. You it know, was, it had it was that. a complete mind fuck of a beer. Like it was like a, a nipa. It smelled like a, a massive tropicalness, and then and it's one of those beers. If you shut your eyes, you expect it to be golden, and then you open your eyes and go, "It's fucking black." Wow, but it was delicious. It was. Callum, fun. your favourite. I yeah. I mean, I, I really, really, really enjoyed the black IPA. But see, see the, the kiss from a rose. I thought that was. It was bang on the money, and we're we're quite we're quite vociferous in our our, our comments about um, doing what it says on the tin, and and I mean to be super critical, it said on the tin that it was a, a a New England, Aye. but and it to, it totally wasn't in New England. Um, but the guy, I mean, if you listen to the pod, of course you listen to the podcast because you're Patreon subscribers. <laughs> um, but they they the, they're, they're using a hop that they've never used before. Um, they weren't entirely sure what it was going to bring to the table. Um, and this is the beer that's come out of it, and it's it's phenomenal. And when, when you look at, at what they're, they're charging for that beer, um, I think it all round is it's an absolute winner. It really is, and it's it's that sort of hybrid style, slightly more bitter than a New England, but slightly less bitter than a West Coast, and it falls into so many people's palate, you know, because there's there's so many people out there that that find the West Coast style a bit harsh and a bit bitter. A bit difficult to fall in love with, um, and this is this is definitely the gateway 
that beer's definitely the gateway, that style, um, to get you into the more bitter West Coast style of beers. Um, so, yeah, I think, I mean, if you were to push me over a barrel, I would say the Black IP was my favourite, but the, I think the surprise of the night for me was the, the Kiss from a Rose. Really nice. Yeah, for Gilroy? Uh, first, I'd like to, to, to note that Callum likes to be pushed over barrels. <laughs> but, <laughs> first off, um, which we all know, <laughs> um, however, and you come on here for well, a chat. Let's just press this pub chat and you just get abuse right. spilled. It wouldn't be a chat with your pals if it was no abuse, would it? Um, <laughs> I would say the black IP was up there. Can I, I just can, it I, first. can I just say, fuck you? <laughs> <laughs> I'd, like, I'd, like to por- I'd like to postulate that you, in fact, can, in fact enjoy the, the, that very sentiment. Um, but, um, the black IPA was up there I tried it first because I couldn't wait and it's sitting for the moment that Callum dropped it off to me I thought I have to this is the this is the the pick of the bunch for me in terms of the ones I want to try I was apprehensive I must admit about the kiss from a rose to begin with but I really enjoyed the flavour I had it at the right time that was my starter beer um, I actually finished short corner finished work at a decent time so I was uh, sitting having my tea and opened the fridge and, and picked that one out had first. a warm-up beer? I did have a warm-up beer and I thought I'll get, the, there's, there's four to enjoy, so I want to make sure I enjoy all four tonight. So I'll start off with this one. And I, honestly, Jade, I'll, I'll tell you, I spent the whole dinner not talking to her, mm-hmm. trying to work out what brew one hop was supposed to bring to the table because I didn't mm-hmm. read the wax. I purposely did not read the side of the can. To, to, I, I read the hop. I didn't read the explanation, so I didn't read the bitterness, and then I, I then I went through right. Okay, what does what does brew one bring? Yeah, right. And then I was like, everything's kind of tropical fruit. I was like, am I not getting am, as the as the as the pineapple died in it, and I'm getting kind of resin through, it, or what what's happening with it? And then the I went and it then went to untapped, which I know is a fountain of nonsense the majority mm. of the time, but found quite a lot mm. of kind of. Quite a, a lot of kind of bitterness, bitterness, bitterness. I'm thinking, right, okay. So I'm not daft. Or even, well, even the the idiots that don't comment properly on beer are saying there's bitterness. And then I read the side of the can and saw the bitterness coming through, it and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was quite. I think it's refreshing. I think it only works as a as a story if you hear the story behind it. It only works as a beer if you hear the story behind it. So if you hear that it's an experimental hop that neither of the two breweries that were involved in the collaboration knew 100% what to do with, or what it, not what to do with, they knew what to do with it, but the, what to get out of it or what they were going to get out of it. It was a kind of beer without a plan. Almost uh, Obviously, when you're brewing the beer, you've got to come up with something. We want haze. We know we're going to get haze. We know we're going to get this. We know we're going to get that. But we don't know 100% what we're going to get out of the hop. And having that process explained to you almost as an experimental series if you were mm. marketing it after the fact would be a good shout but um, just it was a bloody good IPA whatever it is it's a bloody good hazy IPA to sit yeah, and drink definitely. as and its, its explanation I think putting it in a category creates debate and right. it would be one that if you're sitting with other people you would like to debate a bit and you could hear people you can hear people already kind of shouting nonsense at one another saying no it's not this it's, it's too bitter to be in a, a New England IPA it's not my scene all the while they sit and continually sip away at it till they try and figure out what it is, um, which obviously is, is, is money, is dollar signs for the, the brewery involved. So but that one was really good. I didn't mind the West Coast either. I think the West Coast is one that's perfectly palatable. I thought, like, for, me, for, for me, I, I struggle to find one that's my favourite. I thought they were all a really good standard, really high level. Um, I enjoyed like every single one of them. As theirs and... and the kiss from a rose I'm having right now myself. I'm enjoying. It. I like. I like the same as you guys. I like single hop stuff, so you can pinpoint what's what the hop is doing. I really enjoyed uh, the stuff that they've brewed themselves. Like you said, the slice of uh, fried gold and the West Eight Sleepwalk Dance West Coast IPA. Uh, aye, we kind of we kind of left that. I think the the, the uh, black IPA left everyone in its wake, mm-hmm. and I think this the fried slicey gold was a good beer. It was mm-hmm. a, a yeah, it was bit. nice. It was really if you nice. were to say to somebody, if you were to turn around and say to somebody, right, that's our very first offering on the market, I think you would be very pleasantly surprised and, and willing to try whatever was next. Right. Yeah, um, for that. Uh, to beer, be, I, I mean, I know, the, I know, sorry, I know, I know that I'm no, no. 
and I know that they're, they're, they're getting things off the ground and, and all the rest of it. Um, but all the beers that we've tried tonight are brewed off-site. So uh, it, 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 it's, it's their own kit. That, that, that's what I'm looking forward to trying out as, as beers that are brewed on their own kit, whether they can reproduce that. I mean, I know that they, they're, they're coming up with the recipes. They're, they're, they're scheduling the brew day and, and all the rest of it. But it, now they've got their own kit, it would be, be good to see them reproducing the same quality um, in-house. Yeah. Defo, Defo, like I said, after hours here on the Beer Fridge Podcast on our Patreon page. Thank you for being a patron. Um, like we said, the after hours is, mo- is less beer geekery and more pub chat. Thanks for, thanks for being a gullible cunt. I mean, <laughs> uh, thanks very much for continuing to um, support pay money to, to listen Thank to you. the podcast. If you're talking to anybody else that listens to the podcast, insist that they pay money. Exactly. They get hold of they get hold of this absolute gold. Absolute gold. They get things like um they get to to hear us talking to Vault City before anybody else. They get to hear us talking to Brick before anybody else. I'll get to the stage whereby I'll just I mean, as the most talented member of the podcast, I'll just stop talking unless you're a member. So you'll not get any of my content. You'll not get to hear what I think of the beers, you'll not get to hear what I the questions I ask you, the brewery, I mean, the, the, all the top quality content that I ask you, just get missed it unless you're a subscriber. If you Great. want to unlock this, and it's a big lock. Unlock the Gilroy. You need to unlock. If you want to unlock that, then you're going to have to... That's one hell of a key. Skeleton key. How much does it How much does that cost for us to get you to shoot up? Because I might just chip no, it in myself, because I think that would be worth it. No. Unlock the my, Gilroy. I mean, Mark, my commentary on on beer brewing and and, and taste and, and, and taste and just general life is is second to none. It's worth four quid a month. Uh, no, I would. I would highly agree with that. To be fair, I think. I mean, Jade's a patron. No, she's not. no, she's I've not. not even got a patron. No, I've not even got a patron. I just charge her four quid a month just to <laughs> to, to live with me. Uh, no. <laughs> And I stay in her house. How do you want that? You know, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but serious. I mean, so let's move on. Let's move on a wee bit. I'll yes. take control of this. Take this control, is my, please. This is the one that's paid for. This, so what's you, everybody? This, this is this. This was your this idea. Aye. Right, so so everybody's drinking different things. I know Calm had a Calm had a beer explosion. I was assaulted. To talk us through. <laughs> Calm was assaulted by a, a bottle. I was a so 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 we were uh, in our in our fortunate position as podcast contributors, and we occasionally get a hold of beers that that you might not necessarily get access to. And this this sorry, is sorry, hold on, hold Cal, on, hold Cal's on. position as a, pod, a podcast contributor. Oh, okay. <laughs> Carry on. I contribute. <laughs> Fuck you. So so a few weeks back a few weeks back we got we got some uh, dead end brewing beers. We had dead end on at the end of the, the year last year and some phenomenal beers. But I subsequently found out thank you, Gavin, uh, seconds no, before that, I JB Slippers. Well, but no no, I'm talking about thank One you. For, ago. Thank oh. you for warning me. Oh, yeah. So I was informed seconds before I opened this in my lovely living room that, that this, this beer might be slightly overly carbonated. So I took it to the kitchen and opened it over the sink. Unfortunately, that was the correct thing to do because it assaulted me um, and exploded everywhere. Um, and it's the Dead Barn Barrel 4. It's the Apricot. Um... This is a non-release, by the way. Oh, yeah, so yeah. yeah. So it's, it's fun. It's, it's, it's not, not been released for the very reason that it assaulted me. Obviously, they then <laughs> went to assault you know, decent customers. <laughs> so it's it's the farmhouse release with apricots and uh, I so it's it's a three hundred and seventy five mil bottle and I've been left with just under a third of a pint <laughs> because because it exploded everywhere um, but it's absolutely lovely it really is um, the, the, I, I have to be a bit more critical in that that I'm not getting a hunt, I'm not getting a lot of apricot I, I, you know it's difficult to pinpoint the actual apricot flavour. Um, over and above the sort of general fruity souriness, um, but it's farmhouse. that sort of it's that funky farmhouse sour which we all love. Well, apart from Mark, um, we all love. So, but yeah, it's delicious. 
Has he got any red wine characteristics? Yes. Red Thank, sorry, Mark. I'm, mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm four, four and a half cans in, so I'm a bit uh, thingy about this. Yeah, this has been aged for 12 months in red wine barrels. Um, and you're getting that tannic um, sort of red winey flavour um, as well. Um, and it's, it's along the sort of lines of the, the many headed thing from Stuart. Um, very, very pleasant and quaffable flavour um, with addition of fruit. Mm. Oh, I, might, I might send that one, didn't you then, Gav, if it's got many heady things written over it? Cause, oh, uh, many heady things is a tremendous beer, and I'll hear absolutely no, I'll hear no poor words about well, it. If, if, if you've opened it and no enjoyed it, you should have put the lid back on it. I did. And give it to somebody who cared. It's sitting through there. It's still, I've got another one like that's aging, and I'm hoping that it ages that long that it turns into something else. And rightly because, so, you should send it because the only reason you've got it is because of fucking me. Well, no, for me, but well, Jamie Slippers. because of you? Jamie Slippers. I mean, our friend, your dad, who chose to stay in the town that, that he, he calls home now. Uh, and because I passed on the information that the beer was sitting there at my dad's, because let's be honest, my dad isn't he going to drink it? No, correct. Hops fade fast. So, Hops fade fast. Right. Yeah, what are you drinking? So, Mark, no, no, what am no, I no. drinking? He's, so in I've, I've He's in charge. He's in charge. He's in charge. No, I'll go Goodness also. Man. I'm underwhelmingly supermarket. So, I've gone for a Lupulus X Citra IPA, um, 5.4%, Buxton Brewery. I think it's probably, I mean, based on what I've heard for the Tesco stuff, it's the best of a mediocre bunch, um, or one mm. of the best of a mediocre bunch. Yeah, okay. I quite liked. I mean, I, I quite enjoy the flavour. I think for 5.4%, it's what I'm looking for in a supermarket beer. It sits in the middle. You could, I know they sell this in four packs down right. south as well. I don't Eight know if quid. you get the four packs up here yet, but um, a four pack of this would go down well at a barbecue or something like that. You could sit and drink away at it, no problem. Do I think it's as good as the Evil Twin? Probably not. Um, the Evil Twin 330ml cans, if they did the Evil Twin in 440s, it would win out over this every yeah, time. Right. However, I think it's a pretty good beer. It's got a decent haze off it. I'll censor on kind of video also. Is it a decent haze off? But I mean, it looks the part. Would I go as far as paying three quid or three pound fifty for it when it goes to full price? Absolutely not. Two quid with your club card, it's a win. If you're going in there looking for well, a couple a, of beers so, over Friday, yo, there's a question for a you. Is it in Scotland? Is it going up to three quid? Like when it's after no, it? I'm assuming it'll go up. It's three quid without a club card. Is it no two forty? Two forty without a club card. I think it's two forty. I think it'll go up again. I, I don't know. What, I don't know if it will stay there. I mean, the, I know that the the four packs of the Evil Twins did at six quid for a wee while, and then they they crept up, mm-hmm. then they disappeared. Um, I don't know if we'll get them back, but they were. Um, this is quite a good substitute for it if you're not going to get that back again. It's an uh, okay beer. It's fine. Um, it's this fine. is probably the, the worst out of the four beers that we've had, but it was the it, it's the only thing I had refrigerated. So I know it's. it's, it's... I might as well. Talk about something I can be a bit more critical about and when I've not got the person that made it sitting in front of me. Uh, Tesco beers, it's, it's all right. There's a, there's a, a couple that are shit. There's a, mm. Like, that's all right. And then, the, surprisingly, the, the marshmallow one from uh, Brewdog's actually half decent. It's all right. I mean, does it, it, it does what it says in the tin. I know we've spoke about no tours on Saturdays already the night on the actual podcast, but I don't... I still think the best... One of the best examples of a supermarket beer you can get for less than this is the the lock Zoom stuff you can get from. Is it, not, Zoom, well, is Zoom, it called Zoom Call? One? Zoom was Zoom Call was on there, but that was pretty high percentage. The the lock woman, the Brave Hop, Brave Hop. Is, oh, is, is is a good beer. Right. Um, I've not tried the I've not tried the kind of rebrew or I know it's new packaging meant to be same beer, but I think we've already spoke about it's slightly different recipes before for the Albert right. Stewart stuff. But they were up there for a while, but the lock moment uh Brave Hop is, is up there. It's Devil. a good beer. Anyway, right. enough of the enough supermarket trash, Mark. Talk to us about because I know oh, you no. I know you're not overly enjoying yours by the face you made. Ah oh, it... oh, what is it you what is it you've opened? Right. I just um, very, you very, very quickly. Over? The only reason I'm critical is because it's a black IPA, it's seventy one Bruins, uh Life in Motion, so it's the <laughs> it's a new one. Which they sent to me to sample because it's new. They sent him a random message going, Gav, do you want to try some of our new black IP? I was like, oh, okay, no worries. So they sent me some. Oh, can I wish another? Is it too rusty? No. I wish, it's, 
Uh, I'm kind of hoping that I'm, I'm hoping that it's just too cold and when it warms up it gets a little bit better um, I'm just not getting anything much from it at all it, there's a little bit of pineness there's a tiny bit of roastedness but I'm assuming it's just because it may be too cold so come back to me Marky Boy you can continue and I'll see if this warms up and does something so Mark's gone Mark's gone full penguin I'm I'm, you. I'm full in I big time here so I have a, a vitamin C as in C as in the ocean and a trillium a collab here um, called uh, Change the Channel uh, double IPA uh, which sits at a mere sessionable uh, 9% Woof! and that was yeah. a Doug that was the mere Doug uh, and of course it comes in a lovely pint can as well which is um, when is it this one, one, one pint according to this, it looks like a 440. From America, 440. But, um, woofed is woofed. Honestly, this is just like beautiful. I, I get news, everybody can see the color. The haze is, is ridiculous. It's awesome. and for the kids, for the kids, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous, it's, <laughs> it's it is full, full on. The, you so are what getting, are you getting off of? What, what kind of flavours have you got? So right off the bat, I'm getting like like passion fruit. I'm getting like a a, a bitter sort of grapefruity kind of flavour to it as well. And then it kind of follows up with some sweetness, which I think sort of in the kind of like pineapple like that's the easiest like one to kind of pinpoint in terms of fruit. Um but them blended together, so you get this like, it's like it hits you really bitter and then sweetens off, and then you get the alcohol at the end, which is a really weird combination because normally you get hit with the alcohol first, and then you get whatever the flavour is. But the nine percent sits with you on the mouth. Now, some people that might kind of turn off, whereas for me, like that is that's banging awesome. It just. And I've, I've said this the last few weeks, I've been listening back in that, and I've kind of found beers that I like seem to do this, that they kind of coat my tongue, they dance on my tongue, they weave some there that, exactly, that when you drink it and it's gone and you forget about it, and I'm like, mm-hmm. meh. Whereas when it sits with you and you can sit and have a conversation like we're doing right this very second, and... You're still getting some. Taste it all the way through. Yeah, it's phenomenal. And at nine percent, it obviously does have a bit of a, a technically a, a punch to it, but it doesn't taste that way. Like if you if you asked me to put a percentage on it, I would have I would have put it in the six and a half to seven range. Like it's just, honestly, it's wicked. Well worth the seven quid a can that I paid my, my good friend. <laughs> Uh, so that, that was part of the, so it was a cloud water um, kind of collab, like six pack or nine pack. So it was, so you got the two um, International Women's Days brews that they've done. So I've got the stout, I think you've got the IPA, I think you, or had it. You've got it, you've got the pale sitting, sorry, it's a 5% pale. If memory serves, you have another IPA though. I can't remember what happened. So. And then you've got a cloud water Motueka and some milk's IPA. Uh, Callum had the the Trillium uh, Pale Ale. Um, was it is it Cellar Street or something? It's called or something? Four Points. Four Points. And then um, I had the I had a, an IPA, a proper IPA for Trillium, and I've also got the twice the daily serving sitting there. And there's another, I had uh, the Chubbles Cubed. Balls. Um, Chubbles Cubed, which was absolutely superb. What a, a, a triple IPA, that was unbelievable. Um, so 70 odd quid, or 70 quid, I think, delivered for the that nine pack, and I think it's up there. Um, just before I know we're, I don't even want to keep this too long, but mm-hmm. in terms of hype, I did get from friend of the podcast, Jamie, the, the kind of, no, the, the hookup. Hey. But um, JD mentioned so track brewing. Um, if you've not signed up to their mailing list, get signed up to their mailing list pretty quick. Um, 
There's a beer that they're doing with uh, Green Cheek in Highland Park Brewing called um, What Could Go Wrong. It's a hazy triple IPA, and oh. in terms of hype, in terms of hype, it's it's one that's one star on the list. I think they're going to do it as part of a mixed six pack, um, based on what I read on their website. It's going to be a mixed six um, with a glass as well. Oh, um, I love a glass. The airport. other one that I heard about that's of a really good value, and I don't know, I'm just going to check to see if they've still got it, but Friends of Pod um, Hemelvart Beer Cafe. So Hemelvart Beer Cafe are, are based in the Borders, and they do weekly prize draws every week where they do kind of weird brewing things. They've mm-hmm. done already, I think about Christmas time, they did a live uh, Meet the Brewer session with Pohala. This time they're doing a Pohala live from the Pohala Brewery tasting pack. The 9th of April. I'll tell you the beers that are included in it. So there's these are normally 330ml bottles, just so normal size bottles, but the beers. So there's a Pilke, there's a Black Jam Cellar Series, there's a Viker Car, uh, We Believe in Evergreen, Cheesecake Island, and a tasting glass comes with it as well. Temp, a 5%, 10% uh, Baltic Porter, 7.5% Deeper, 7.5% Imperial Goes. Black Jam is a blend of Imperial Baltic Porters aged in sherry and bourbon barrels and a pint tumbler. And it is £27 oh. only. Bargain. Which is incredible value. It's still live on their website at the moment, so that's good to go with. And the track one, I think, is a, a, is a kind of, as I say, a mix six. The other kind of weird hype beer that I think we're going to try and get Hemelvar onto if they've not got it already. Is the it's called um, Typhoon Lagoon Tasty Deep Dive Edition, and I'm no joking. Wait, do you see this? Do you see? The, look at the colour of that. Oh, oh wow! That's as gas as green as the glen. Is that good toilet duck in it? So that's for the Vale um, Brewing, based in the US, and I really, really want to try oh, it to see the if the. If the food colouring is the is the business or not, and Hemelvark can get their hands on a fair share of uh, US beer, so I'd quite like to push them to get the veil in and and try that blue beer. <laughs> it looks right. it looks quite algae-ish. I quite fancy trying it. it for sure, quite I'd quite happily pay eleven quid for a can of that. Just just to have it. Well, maybe pay twenty two quid and I'll give you the half for it. <laughs> uh, pay, pay twenty two and I'll right. give you a, a fucking fucking a just add of toilet to, duck. <laughs> add, it, add it add it to the invoice, mate. It'll be fine. Aye. Uh, uh, a couple of cans of that. Like we said afterwards here on the Beerfish Podcast um Patreon page. Thank you again for subscribing and following anything stupid. And your in gen- the gentleman's week that has came up that you want to share. Uh, with see, the world. see what I would like to do from from a patron point of view is anybody, if you, if a patron member, if you've listened this far, so you're twenty minutes in, oh, your boys deep, you you you're in. Okay, what I want you to do. Why is, are you sniffing the dog's fucking ears, you freak? I'm blowing on it. You know. Uh... This is a video podcast. <laughs> um, this is the unofficial start of the podcast, right here. Uh, uh, the second talent. Uh, anyway, the, <laughs> what, I want you, uh, what I want the patrons, if you've listened this far, is I want you to tag someone that you think should be a patron member in a social media post. Tag us in. Tag the uh, the podcast with the patron details. Send me their phone number. I'll phone them and have a word with them. Have a phone exactly. Them. And we want them involved. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> uh, hello? Uh, hello? Who's this? Scott from the Beer Fish Podcast. Who the fuck are you? Uh, why are you not signed up? Signed up to what? A patron page. What patron? Just fucking sign up. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? ABC, mate? Always be closing, so <laughs> that's what it's all about. So that's what I want. So I feel if tag you're... somebody that tag somebody that's not subscribed. In fact, tell us somebody that you've spoken to. If if you've spoken to them about the beer fridge podcast and told them to have a listen, and you know fine well that they've listened to one and they've not subscribed yet, ask them to subscribe or ask them 
what it would take for them to part with four quid a month. What what, what did what would the beer fridge podcast need to be giving them? And I'm not giving them a we'll, free can of beer. We'll stop, month. That's we'll not happening. Pretty low, let's be honest. I, I mean, well. there's a, a a level that we will stoop to that is probably lower than the current. Um, but as let us know what it is that they yeah. want. What, what would they want? What, what do they think is worth four quid a month? If if not this. If it, if it if it doesn't involve you and my stuff, I'm in. I mean, we're kind of stuck at the moment. We're happen. kind of hamstrung by not being able to get out in a bit. But I mean, yeah. despite the fact that they keep secretly brewing without me being there or being invited to it, because mm-hmm. I think they're fear that I pick apart their process. Mm-hmm. I would like to live. I would like to live <laughs> uh, to kind of capture their brew days in person yeah. and and see what they're like. Um, so that I could video them for the, I would quite yeah. like to send them on to the Patreon and, and Instagram and and everywhere we snippets, but then the whole brew day I'd quite like to to Patreon stream yeah, or well, to put on Patreon so that we could have the whole brew day, but we snippets. I'll do, I'll do it the next time. I'll get um, I'll get our good friend uh, G Gaming to hook me up with some. Aye. Yeah. We'll get we'll get some. Oh, here cameras, by the way, FYI, we'll some camera equipment. In. Incidentally. If you're a bit like go search G Gaming on um Facebook, it's G E E Gaming. I watched this afternoon. Gaming I was, was, I, was, I, was, I was I was meant to be doing work and I got sucked into his stream. What was he doing playing golf? He's playing golf and he's playing like this new this uh, it's called Divot oh, Derby. Right on, no. Shit hole. It's called Divot Derby and it's fucking hilarious. It is the most hilarious thing. I, I genuinely want to buy the game just to play this game mode. It looks awesome. Very good. Anyway, if you made it this far, we'll touch, make sure you're signing up, a pal, yes. the, the old Patreon page. Oh, so they'll oh, potentially get free homebrew. To... Oh, there's, oh definitely, um, there's definitely homebrew available for anybody that signs up. If, you know, um, homebrew is really good. Has it been cheeky, well, has a cheeky 80 shilling just been done? Yeah, Come we on. bottled the uh, Mark and I bottled socially distanced the bottled the um eighty shilling on Saturday, so there's twenty nine bottles of that on the go. And I've got about eighteen litres of IPA that finished fermentation today, I would suggest. So I'll let it sit until the weekend and then that'll be bottled as well. Ready to go rock and Well, roll. I'll come and video the bottling. You go. I quite like to be involved for socially socially distance socially outside. Distance, of course. Well, to have a distance bottling line. <laughs> Come on, just going like that. All right, good job, Mark. All right, well done. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to actually do it. I'll set it up. I've got a tripod. We'll set it uh, up. Oh, you need, uh, you need to try it. Uh, of course, you've got a tripod. You need, I've got a tripod and everyone sitting there. We can set up to watch the, the bottle and then, I'll, and then we can go through it and edit it and, and sort of it. But I, good. we could take it, some stuff in and then we could... Pr- be good practice for when we do, get do to you like, do you like, breweries and we can have a few cameras set up. Do you like who said he did it? Aye. Well, that. I can edit it. I can edit it. There we go, it's Gavin. No hard. Bingo. It's no hard, Gavin. Editing video is dead easy. Free, baby. I mean, if, see, free. See, see if this was me, if I was doing the podcast, just notes. If I was doing the podcast, I would have everybody, rec- I would have every podcast member rec- there you go. And Scott is now muted. Um... <laughs> <laughs> right, let's do this. I would have every I would have every podcast member recording marine audio, but that's just me. Uh, so would I, but, that's, that's uh, but awesome. then somebody would forget to send you it, Gavin. You know, fine well who that is. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, right. Um, as always, appreciate um, you guys sign up to the, the Beer Fridge Podcast Patreon page. Exclusive content for you guys, um, which we appreciate you guys doing. Like Scott said, if you know somebody who listens to the podcast and wants to get extra content, um, shove them our way on the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Beardfish Podcast. Um, I'm not going to do any of the other nah. sponsorship it's, stuff. This is just for us. This is just, just, for us just, and for just for us. Just for us. Make sure, however, make sure you go to trinitybrewco.com. Their beers are awesome. Genuinely yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, superb. Won't and if you've listened to the last few, I'm assuming the brick and the, the the other codes that we've got live, I can't remember what they are, but brick ruin especially. More mountain brick. Listen to their podcast, more mountain, use their codes. Uh, more more mountain, I've literally got a new case coming out. It's 12 cases of beer. 
um, and I've got three new beers on there, so go and check them out. Um, yeah, Beer Fish Podcast, bringing you the biggest breweries in the UK every single week. Find me a podcast that does that. Exactly. You'll still be exactly. fucking looking. You'll still be fucking looking because we're the only one. Uh, Beer Fish Podcast. As always, thank you very much. My name's Gavin. We've had Scott. We've had Callum. We've had Mark, who's fucked off. Um, and until next, not next week, two weeks' time, uh, we'll see you on After Hours. Cheers, bye. Yes. Good luck.